Hey, Lily Landers. All right, so who is curious about data products and how profitable they can really be? If that's you, then make sure to stay tuned because I'm gonna share with you a story of how one company is taking raw data resources and turning it into almost half a million dollar in revenue every single month. And of course, I don't just provide this story, so make sure to stick around to the end because that's where I'm gonna break it all down for you in a simple incremental way that you can use to guide your thinking and decision-making when it comes to building your own data products. For the very best data leadership and business building advice, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when a new episode drops each week. Also, I just wanna shout out to the community. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your comments and your support. Please keep them rolling in and letting me know what I can create for you next because it really does your your needs and your opinions do fuel the content plan for this channel. So thank you. Okay, so let's just caveat this, this discussion here. How did I come across this juicy information and why am I qualified to reverse engineer a data product like this anyway? I came across this information as I was doing research for the third version of Data Science for Dummies, the book I originally wrote in 2014. And with respect to how I'm qualified to reverse engineer a data product, I have been building them for companies since 2012. And since 2014, I've been building and selling them in my own business, Data Mania. After serving 10% of Fortune 100 companies, I started supporting other data professionals to becoming world-class data leaders and entrepreneurs. Newer data entrepreneurs like Dr. Chantel here, who is still in the very beginning of starting out her business, yet still used what I taught her to land a $3,000 contract for only 15 hours of work. Go Chantel! And in case you're new around here, I'm Lillian Pearson. Nice to meet you. Before I start dishing out all the details on how you can take raw data resources and turn them into half a million dollars per month, let's do a little reality check. There is no such thing as overnight success. Once you see how this other data company did it, you'll probably start getting lots and lots of ideas for ways you can make money with data expertise and data resources. But just remember, success doesn't happen overnight and it definitely doesn't happen unless you stay focused. If you're anything like I was back in 2012 when I started out my data business, then side hustle data mania, then you love working with data, but you're not so keen on answering to other people and spending your life building someone else's business in exchange for a paycheck or looking over your shoulder wondering when the next shoe will drop in terms of layoffs and job changes. Heck, I didn't like those things then and I wouldn't like them today if I had to face them. The thing is, starting a data business isn't as easy as just making a decision. The follow through is where the money is at. I remember having no clue with respect to what I would actually sell and that was after I quit my day job. Personally, it took me several years and tens of thousands of dollars working with business mentors before I developed the firm grasp I have today on how the data industry works from inside out. And of course, lots has changed in my perspective over the years, which is why I wanted to get this video out to you to help you get ahead in terms of thinking like a data entrepreneur instead of like a data employee. Okay, the first thing you need to know about this data product is it's actually built on top of data that was acquired through a data partnership. So from a business perspective, a data partnership is just a paid agreement between companies where they sell their business data and the personal data they own on their customers to other businesses. With respect to data privacy and misuse potential, there is a lot not to love about data partnerships. But I will let you decide for yourself after you've had a chance to see how this specific data product works. Hey, I wanna hear from you. Do you have any ideas for cool data products? I would love it if you would share those with me in the comments below. All right, so it is time for me to get out there and name names. The company that is generating $450,000 per month selling personal data that they acquired through data partnership is a company called SafeGraph. Now, SafeGraph is backed by angel investor Peter Thiel and reportedly raised $45 million off of one pitch deck in their Series B funding round. That must have been a pretty compelling pitch deck, right? So to get a good view of what these investors actually bought into, let's pry into this quote unquote data as a service. What SafeGraph really does is it buys people's location-based data from mobile app developers. Now, this data is generated through the course of the application actually running on your phone. And if you read the terms and conditions, then you probably, hopefully, would have have seen a clause in there where you actually gave them permission to collect data on your whereabouts in exchange for the right to use the application. So you would be agreeing Oops. to this just by the act of actually installing the application on your phone. So what SafeGraph really does is it comes in and instead of reinventing the wheel and trying to generate its own location-based data about people, it just goes and buys location-based data from mobile application developers and then takes that data and really, really narrows down into retail activity. So any of your location-based activity with respect to when you go to malls or shopping plazas, go to get a Starbucks, that is really where the money is at for SafeGraph because they are selling to retailers. So they're trying to help retail 
commercial companies decide, you know, best where to place their stores in physical locations, where the most traffic is at. And instead of having to do this with like a forecasting technique, which would have been done previously, now they're actually able to take real user data and see where people are actually going and how long they're staying. Once they have narrowed down on that exact type of information, then they would plot it on their web-based mapping application. And then they present that web-based application as a product for sale for subscription to retail companies. Of course, these companies just take that information and use it to make better business decisions. And they're actually collecting data from tens of millions of Americans' smartphones. In fact, if you have a smartphone and you are in America, then there is a good chance that your location data is being sent over to SmartGraph for resale. This is actually not a new story. SafeGraph has been doing this since 2016 to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue over the last few years for this small Colorado-based data company. If you're enjoying this video on data businesses and models for data businesses, then I'm sure you're going to love this video I created on the very best business models for data entrepreneurs. We'll leave a link to it in the description below and put it in the cards on this video as well. All right, as promised, I wanted to break this down for you from a logistics perspective. So it could give you some framework to think of data resources and data products for your own decision making in the future in case you decide to build your own data product. Let's look at what's going on with the safe graph data product. Okay, so imagine we have three businesses. They're A, B, and C, right? Business A is, of course, the mobile app developers. So there's multiple mobile app developers. And then business B is going to be safe graph. Then business C is going to, of course, be the retail companies that are purchasing information from the safe graph. The original data quote unquote owner is of course the mobile app developers. They've collected the, your location data from your phone and they, because of the terms and conditions, they own that data. So what they do is they sell it to business B, SafeGraph in exchange for money. And then SafeGraph is the intermediary data business. What they do is they turn that raw data into a market research product. In fact, I wouldn't say that SafeGraph is necessarily an AI SaaS company because I don't know about what types of predictive models they have going in inside of the application. My best guess is that it's actually a market research product that is served up on a mapping application on a geographic information system that's available through the web. It's more like a market research product that's available through web application and it is sold through a subscription basis to business C. Now, business C would be any type of retail company. You can imagine McDonald's, Starbucks, whatever. They're able to then come in and collect information about people's activities around these retail locations in exchange for money. So that is the sale of the data product. And in order for SafeGraph or any intermediary business to produce that data product, they actually have to render data services in-house. So if you're a data scientist or any sort of data professional, those would be in your wheelhouse. Those services are what are needed in order to convert the raw data to the product that can then be sold to the customer. And data, the data partnership aspect is actually just the agreement between mobile app developer and business B. Now, if you are digging this real talk on data businesses, then I know for sure you're going to love my free data entrepreneur toolkit. This is the 32 very best tools and processes that you can use to grow your own data business fast. And in fact, these are the exact tools and processes we used in my business to hit the multiple six figure mark. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Also, we have a free Facebook community and I would love to see you and get to know you inside there. So it's called Becoming World Class Data Leaders and Entrepreneurs and I'll leave a link to it in the description below as well. If you like this video, then show it some love by giving it a thumbs up and tell me in the comments below what are your thoughts on the ethics involved in data partnerships. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll be first to know when the next episode drops.